We're big, we're bad, and we're back with Gordon Campbell, who's going to give us his top 10 gospel grooves. All right. So where do we start? We got to start with Joel Smith. He's the father of gospel drumming. Joel Smith, rest in peace. He just passed a few years ago. He's the father. He played with the Hawkins. So everything he played on is like my favorite, but for this list, I kind of try to break it up and some other stuff. The first song is called Don't Wait Till the Battle's Over, and it's by the Hawkins family, and it's Joel. And Joel actually played drums and bass. And just for the record, I'm never going to play it exactly how he played it. That's, it's like a mystery on exactly how he played it, but I'm going to try to get close. That's the, the intro. That's a great groove. Woo. Whoa. Joe Smith. Next, Mario Skeeter Winans, uh, the song called Now Are We on Ronald Winans' Family and Friends album. So this was a classic. And he was probably 14 or 15 when he recorded this. Really? Yeah. Oh, the other stuff, Joel too. A lot of records Joel played on, he was like 14 or 15 years old. So they were kids like playing on classic gospel. So these are the intros that, yeah. when I heard them, they sucked me right in. Incredible. What do we Pause. have next? All right. Could have been me. This is more straight. Terry Baker, Kirk Franklin. I'm sure you heard of Kirk Franklin. Terry Baker, um, song is called Could have been me. Mm -hmm. That, that's straight, is it? <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. For gospel, yeah. It's just that, mm, 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 mm. You got to hear the rest of the music. It's horns, and it's, it's pretty locked. And look these songs up, too. They're, they're pretty amazing. We'll have links underneath. All right. Um, this song is another groove that's just like a, a basic gospel. We call it like the Brooklyn groove. It's just got that, just a swing to it. But there's a lick in there that is like a classic lick by Gerald Hayward. The artist's name is Hezekiah Walker. The song is called I'll Make It, and the drummer is Gerald Hayward, who's one of my good friends. Um, so I'm going to play the groove a little bit, and then I'm going to play the field that he basically made famous. And sidebar, I was teaching a gospel class at MI, gospel drumming, and all the drummers would come in thinking they were just going to learn these chops, so what they call gospel chops. I'm like, no, we're going to learn the history of the drums. And in the beginning, you couldn't play drums in church because it was thought of as music of the devil or whatever. Um, and people started sliding it in. So first they'd just be like super, just holding it down. You would almost hear them like in the background, like no mics on the drums. And this is one of the first records where the drummer took a space and like did a fill. It wasn't heard of in gospel before, and it's Gerald. So it's called I'll Make It, and I'll try to do the fill that he did. I call him the Brooklyn Doubles because he's Brooklyn, and that's where I heard it from.
I don't know if I played it perfectly like Daryl played it, but that was the vibe. Incredible. And when we heard that, it was crazy because the sig significance of it was most, like, it went from you couldn't play drums in church yeah. to this is, like, late 80s. Yeah. That spot came. It's like a verse. And then it breaks down to the choir singing, and he did that fill. So we had never really heard a lot of fills outside of Joe Smith and gospel on any records. Yeah. And growing up, all I can listen to was gospel. My family was church all day, so I couldn't listen to jazz. It was on the radio, maybe. So to hear that was like, whoa. And that's right when we started hearing Weckle and the Electric Band. So that's the first gospel record I actually heard of Phil. Actually, second. And the first one was Gerald, too, on a whole other thing. But that was his thing, the double. Incredible Phil. Yes. <laughs> this is a newer one. This is Calvin Rogers, who is one of my gospel favorites, too. This song is called I Can't Hold It. And it's another one. It's a groove within the song. Like, it's a super fast, churchy. We call it like praise break or like shout music. And then they turn it into something else. But he does this, this one groove inside that song that's crazy. That's the groove. When I heard that, I was like, like I probably listened to it for like an hour straight. Just kept rewinding it. So that's Calvin Rogers. Um, what else? Uh, another Joe Smith on the Hawkins. And this one, he definitely was like 14 or 15 years old. Like I said, gospel, the drums were not featured as much. Now they're featured. Now it's like all over the place. But back then, the drums literally just held the beat. It was... So it was one or two, Joel Smith, Gerald, Jeff Davis, a couple other guys that just kind of took it out the box and, and then it never, it never came back <laughs> in the box. Good. So this one is called Until I Found the Lord. It's Joel Smith. It starts out with him. He probably was 14 or 15 years old on this song. So it's another one. It was like, wait, the drummer's playing by itself with no sense? Like, it was, blew my mind back when I first heard it. All right, ready? Uh -huh. That's kind of like the intro. Amazing. Pseudo. The next one was one of my best friends who passed away, Marvin McQuitty. It's called Let the Praise Begin. Fred Hammond is the artist. And Marvin played on the actual original record. Rest in peace, Marvin. So here we go. So that Amazing. was a cool group. Oh Lord, We Praise You is uh, Hezekiah Walker, Gerald Hayward on drums. And this is one I always tell people, if you grow up playing in church, you play all different styles of music. You play Latin, you play, but we didn't know what we were playing. We just were playing that groove. And it, it makes you a well-rounded drummer. I get this question, why are gospel drummers on all the gigs now? Or people that start, it's because we played every style growing up. Not knowing what it was called, but that's what it turned into. Kind of basic Latin, but for us growing up, 
we were like, wait, what is that? You know, this is a good one. This is kind of newer. Israel Houghton is the artist. The song is called Everywhere That I Go. And I believe that's Calvin Rogers on there too. So I'm gonna play that groove. That's the basic vibe of that song. Of course, it sounds way better with the whole band <laughs> play. I'm like trying to sing in my head. Last one, this is a newer one. This is pretty, pretty recent. It's a new drummer, well, new to me, Josiah Maddox, cold Chicago young guy, early 20s. Um, and actually, I think Calvin Rogers played this on the record, but the live version is Josiah, and it's just killing. And I was teaching a lot of my students, I was making them <laughs> learn this song, so I kind of learned it. The artist is named James Fortune. The song's called um, It's Gonna Happen. That's kind of the vibe. That was a crazy one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Hi, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. Please have any comments and questions below. We will have a list and a link to all of these songs for you as well. Gordon, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Yep.